We will see now the material points rotation and translation related change in the x, y, z coordinate in 3D and if it is in 2D the change in x, y coordinate. Where the rotation and translation comes in structural geology there are many such cases for example any of the translational faults commonly we uh, define faults as dip slip, strike slip, oblique slip faults. Among strike slips we define the dextral and the sinistral faults then the normal fault and the reverse fault various classifications we commonly assume that each material point has moved equal amount and in terms of rotation there are rotational faults where one faulted block rotates with respect to another in that case actual rotation takes place so any material point in the hanging wall or in the foot wall block undergoes a change in the x y z coordinate. So, there are other cases also where translation and rotation can be found in structural geology. We will understand the coordinate shift by this translation and rotation and slowly we will bring these things again back into the tensor and it will be useful. A pure rotation within OX, OY axis the green board defines a plane and there is a point OD with coordinate x0, y0 phi amount of anti-clockwise rotation brings the point to d dash. So, x0, y0 is the old coordinate of d and x, y, y1 is the new coordinate of d dash. I repeat phi is here anti-clockwise rotation. If that has happened, then the new coordinate x1, y1 can be represented as a function of x0, y0 and also the angle phi. This can be deduced cos phi sin phi and minus sin phi cos phi. This matrix 2 into 2 can be called as a rotational matrix can be represented by R phi and in case of a clockwise rotation what we need to do in the formula instead of phi we have to put minus phi. I will request the students to write down that matrix format equation x1 y1 is equal to you put here phi equal to minus phi write down and here you write x0 y0. So, be careful this formula is for the anti-clockwise rotation. Now, students might be aware of nearly similar things when the coordinate axis rotate and what becomes the new coordinate. Let us say this is x axis and y axis and here is a point P. Suppose the OXY coordinate system rotates in an anti-clockwise direction by an angle theta. So, this becomes the new x axis call it x dash and this becomes the new y axis call it y dash. Initially the angle was 90 degree and later also the angle is 90 degree. So, the p points coordinate changes. Then also we can write in a similar matrix format, but be very clear here we are not talking about the coordinate axis rotation. Here we are saying that the material point actually rotates and what I have written in terms of the Cartesian coordinate. A similar presentation can be made in another way. Let us say this OD distance is equal to R. Now, OD equal to OD1 or OD dash. So, this OD dash distance is also equal to R. Imagine this angle was initially theta. So, the D point can be represented by R comma theta and the D dash can be represented by R comma theta plus phi. I repeat theta is the angle, OD is the distance R and since OD distance is maintained by rotation, so this OD1, OD dash is also R. So, in the R theta coordinate this is R, this is R. Initial angle let us say it was theta and now it is R theta plus phi. Theta you can also obtain in this way theta equal to tan inverse y0 by x0. So, if you want you can also write such matrix in the case of R theta coordinate system as well. Okay. Now, with this understanding we move to the next thing. Imagine there is a phi amount of rotation done. Once I say phi 
and not minus 5 that means we are talking an anti clockwise rotation but after that it was followed by xt yt amount of translation so here also the coordinate xy coordinate do not rotate what rotates is only the material point due to some deformation so here the new coordinate x1 y1 and 1 we are writing like this is equal to we write this a part of the matrix same as what I wrote here cos phi cos phi sin phi minus sin phi. So, that one is rotated is written over here cos phi cos phi minus sin phi i sin phi. Now, here we put 0 0 1 here we take 1 here I write x t and y t x t and y t are the amounts of translation x t amount of translation along x axis and y t amount of translation along the y axis and here I write the old coordinate x 0, y 0 and 1. So, now I will request the students to expand it x 1 equal to what write down y 1 equal to what from this you write down and here you get 1 0 0 1 and 1 this is basically not useful one, but we had to write why we had to write this so that we get a proper matrix multiplication situation here it is a 3 into 3 matrix and here also we have to take a suitable matrix and so that after multiplication we get this kind of a matrix. This is 3 rows and 1 column 3 into 1 and here this is also 3 into 1 matrix. So, if we multiply this 3 will be out 3 into 1 will be coming over here. So, to match the story we have written but this particular row has no meaning actually it has no meaning. Okay. Now, what we can write? We can write x i is equal to t and then x 0 in a very short form we can write here x is in a capital. Now, we call this t can call we can call it as a homogeneous transformation matrix because this is a transformation where a homogeneous deformation has taken place. And this T, this kind of presentation are used in robotics, mechanics and in computer graphics which also used in structural geology to study the deformation. Okay. Now, after this is being done, we are moving to another case, first translation and then rotation. So, what is the difference between this and the previous one? Here we were saying first rotation then translation, rotation and then translation and here it is first translation then rotation. So, x 0 y 0 point after x t y t amount of translation along x and y axis we will have a new coordinate x 0 plus x t and y 0 plus y t. So, therefore, the latest coordinate after rotation x 2 y 2 will be given by cos phi sin phi minus sin phi cos phi this matrix by the way is same as what we wrote earlier because it is same process anti clockwise rotation it is phi and not minus phi and here we take x 0 plus x t and y 0 plus y t and if we expand it we will get a different result from what was done here. So, translation followed by rotation and rotation followed by translation will give different results. Now, again a request to student is that you have to write down from your x 2 equal to what and y 2 equal to what. There is no need to memorize what if phi is clockwise basically putting phi equal to minus phi we will anyway get it. We are going to see now the rotation along 3 perpendicular axis one by one and then their combination. Imagine we are dealing with an x axis, y axis and z axis and these green curved arrows indicate the rotation. As per my green arrow directions, all of them indicate anti-clockwise rotation. Suppose you are standing here and watching towards the center, then this is anti-clockwise rotation. Suppose you are standing here and watching towards the center, then this is an anti-clockwise rotation. Similarly, suppose you are standing here, basically from top you are looking at a plan view then also it is an anti clockwise rotation. Imagine the amount of rotation along x axis in this way is gamma, the rotation that takes place along the y axis in this way to an amount of beta and 
alpha is the amount of anti clockwise rotation in the sense of the green arrow and the amount is alpha now rotation along x axis in this way only is called as roll rotation along y axis in this way is called pitch and the rotation along the z axis in this way is called yaw so the roll of gamma pitch of beta and the yaw of alpha will be considered separately now a word of caution comes here you find a word pitch and here the structural geologists have to be very alert why because pitch has a different meaning in structural geology also known as rick it goes bit out of context from this discussion but since the same term has come quickly i will describe what it is we are dealing with an inclined plane for general discussion this is the inclined plane and the intersection between this inclined plane and the horizontal plane is called the strike of the inclined plane so this green line is a strike of this inclined plane now think that on that inclined plane there is a line like this now the angle between the line lying on the plane and the strike of the plane is given by say angle phi t phi t is called the pitch or rec of the line lying on the plane so you see that here in the sense pitch has been used in structural geology is completely different from the thing that we are describing here so now we go back to the discussion on rotation along the axis okay now we are going to write the rotation matrix if only yaw is working that means a rotation in anti clockwise direction with respect to the z axis then the rotation matrix is written as r z z is the direction z direction and alpha is the angle of rotation in an anti clockwise sense is given by cos alpha minus sin alpha sin alpha cos alpha here is 0 0 1 and here is also 0 0 1 so this rotation matrix can be used to find out or to convert from old coordinate to the new coordinate for example say x0 y0 z0 is the old coordinate if i put it here in a matrix format and before that i place this rz alpha matrix and perform a matrix multiplication we will get x1 y1 and the z1 new coordinate what i meant is that x0 y0 z0 by an alpha amount of rotation along the z axis has attained a new coordinate x1 y1 and z1 so this is explained now similarly we come to pitch 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 is different than structural geologists what they commonly called as pitch or rec which i have already explained here the rotation matrix r has been given a suffix y y because y is the axis y is the axis that is why we wrote here y and beta is the amount of rotation r y beta in that case the matrix takes this shape cos beta 0 sin beta 0 1 0 and minus sin beta 0 cos beta so if there is a coordinate point x0 y0 z0 where there has been a rotation of beta angle anti clockwise with respect to the y axis and no other deformation then this matrix here and before that you put r z beta matrix this matrix here perform a multiplication between the two matrices you get the x1 y1 and z1 as a new coordinate after such a rotation has happened now we will take the roll rx gamma yx because along x axis or about the x axis gamma amount of anti clockwise rotation has happened and in this case the rotation matrix rx gamma is equal to 1 0 0 0 cos gamma minus sin gamma 0 sin gamma cos gamma so the new coordinate x1 y1 z1 will be given by for only such a rotation and no other movement slip rotation etc 
Rx gamma, this matrix multiplied by old coordinate x0, y0 and z0. If we do this matrix multiplication, we get x1, y1 and the z1 values. We have seen the case of rotation along x, y and z axis. If they were done anti-clockwise, how the old coordinate relocates and the new coordinate can be obtained. Now what will happen if the rotation has taken place say along one axis first and then along another axis and then followed by another axis. In other words, the rotation matrix that was created for individual rotation along individual axis will have to be combined. Diagram remains basically the same, there is no change. Suppose there is a first rotation of gamma angle with respect to x axis. So there is a gamma amount of roll. Then there is a beta amount of rotation anti-clockwise with respect to y axis. That means there is a pitch of beta and this is followed by another and the final rotation of alpha amount along the z axis that means alpha yaw is applied. In that case we have to write in this sequence this matrix in the right hand side, this in the middle and this at the left. And we say that this rotation followed by this rotation followed by this rotation will be given by the multiplication of the three matrices and this will be represented by R alpha beta gamma that means first gamma amount of rotation then beta and then alpha along the different axis. So R alpha beta gamma once this multiplication is made takes this form it is a very big matrix cos alpha cos beta cos alpha sin beta sin gamma minus sin alpha cos gamma cos alpha sin beta cos gamma plus sin alpha sin gamma sin alpha cos beta sin alpha sin beta sin gamma plus cos alpha cos gamma sin alpha sin beta cos gamma minus cos alpha sin gamma and here it is minus sin beta then cos beta sin gamma and cos beta cos gamma. Now this relation can be simplified in this way I can call this element as R11 this entire element as R12, this one as R13, this as R21, this as R22, this as R23, this one as R31, this one as R32, this one as R33. We use small r because this is a rotation matrix. So that is why small r symbol has been used. So this very big matrix simplifies to this matrix. After giving Rij symbols, it simplifies to R11, R12, R13, R21, R22, R23, then R31, R32 and R33. Now it is the responsibility of the viewer to check alpha is equal to tan inverse R21 divided by R11, beta equal to tan inverse minus R31 divided by square root of sum of R square 32 and R square 33 and gamma is equal to tan inverse R32 divided by R33. Now once this is being done, we are going to see what happens if there is a alpha beta gamma amount of rotation that means first rotation of gamma then beta about the three different axis then it is followed by a translation. Whatever is the material point the x, y, z translation of xt, yt and zt amount that means after being rotation is made three rotations xt amount of translation along x direction, yt amount of translation along the y direction and the zt amount of translation along the z direction is made. So in that case the matrix takes this form t dash is equal to the 3 into 3 t matrix which I have already described which I have already called as other than t matrix we have used the symbol r and then alpha beta gamma that big matrix is to be stated here. Then you write another element here xt, yt and 0 and here you add 0, 0 and 0. So it was 3 into 3 matrix and I have added another row and another column. So t dash matrix is basically a 4 into 4 matrix. So this can be one general formula. Now what students can do is that they can consider say beta equal to 0 and how the matrix will look like and this part need not be remembered just to practice. Suppose alpha equal to 0 then what would be the matrix form and suppose gamma equal to 0 what would be the matrix form and if you take beta equal to 0 and alpha equal to 0 this matrix will be reduced 
to the starting matrix from where we were composing them by fitting by multiplying each of them. Now one more concern here we started R alpha beta gamma saying that gamma rotation then beta rotation then alpha rotation and then this operation gave rise to that big matrix. What will happen? I do R beta alpha gamma. Will it be same as the, what we have already uh, shown as a big matrix? This means first the gamma amount of rotation then alpha amount of rotation along the axis z and then beta amount of rotation along the axis y. So, students have to perform on very big paper or go to the classroom take a very big board and keep multiplying the three rotation matrices and check whether this is is it same as say r alpha beta gamma this remains a question for the students we have seen so far the coordinate axis are fixed the three coordinate axis mutually perpendicular and the material point can be rotated anti clockwise sense or also in clockwise sense with respect to those axes to the angle alpha beta gamma etc now we are going back to a situation where the material point remains fixed but the coordinate axis are rotated and we want to know what is the new coordinate created for the same point which remains static so here this is the title rotation of the coordinate axis consider ox1 ox2 and ox3 are the old coordinate system perpendicular to each other and passing through the origin o and after the rotation ox1 dash ox2 dash and ox3 dash is a new coordinate system and consider that in an old coordinate system x1 x2 x3 was the coordinate of a point k that point k did not rotate only the coordinate axis got rotated so it has to assume a new coordinate k dash x1 dash x2 dash and x3 dash suppose the amount of rotation of the x y and z axis are known still they are maintaining the perpendicular relationship the question is for the given x1 x2 x3 find out the x1 dash x2 dash and the x3 dash value how do we do it first we will define a parameter l11 for cos of angle o x1 the x coordinate x axis before rotation and the x axis after rotation that is the meaning cos of o x1 angle o x1 dash similarly by changing 1 1 2 1 2 2 2 2 3 we can write several such formulae so the general formula can be l i j is equal to cos of o x i and then angle o x j dash this is the old coordinate system this is a new coordinate system and the angle between them these angles are to be given so that we know the l i j values only after that from the known x1 x2 x3 we can find out the x1 dash x2 dash and the x3 dash straight away i take you to the formula is given by the new coordinate x1 dash x2 dash x3 dash is equal to l i j transpose matrix l11 l21 l31 l12 l22 l32 l13 l23 l33 basically you can see this l11 l11 1213 l21 2223 l31 3233 and here is the x1 x2 and x3 which is the old coordinate of the point k so these equations can be presented in a compact form as x dash j is equal to l i j transpose x i and in the tensor form it can be written as x dash i j equal to l j i x i j l i j suppose we want to write down the old coordinate x1 x2 x3 and we want to push the new coordinates over there x1 dash x2 dash and x3 dash then a transpose of this matrix is written l11 l12 l13 21223313232 and 33 actually we call this as the lij matrix so therefore this matrix is called the lij transpose matrix now this matrix can be written in this way xi equal to lij x dash j and in the tensor form xij equal to lij x dash ij lji we will understand here this equation and i will leave up to students to understand this equation xi equal to lij xj dash put i equal to 1 so i get x1 is equal to 
एल वन जे एक्स जे डैश नाउ आई उल पुट जे इक्वल टू वन टू एंड थ्री सो इफ आई डू दैट इट बिकम्स एल वन वन एक्स वन डैश प्लस एल वन टू एक्स टू डैश प्लस एल वन थ्री एक्स थ्री डैश विच इज एक्स वन इज इक्वल टू एल वन वन एक्स वन डैश प्लस एल वन टू एक्स टू डैश प्लस एल वन थ्री एक्स थ्री डैश सो इन दिस वे फॉर आई इक्वल टू वन दिस हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन दिस वॉज दी आइंस्टाइन सामेशन वॉज यूज हियर एंड इट हैज बीन एक्सपैंडेड द सामेशन सिम्बल वॉज नॉट यूज नाउ फॉर एक्स टू वॉट टू डू फॉर आई इक्वल टू टू यू कैन सिमिलरली फाइंड आउट द इक्वेशन एंड फॉर आई इक्वल टू थ्री यू कैन फाइंड आउट दिस इक्वेशन नाउ वंस यू हैव अंडरस्टूड इट कम बैक टू दिस इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैट्रिक्स एंड यू ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन x dash j is equal to l i j transport x i we have seen how the old coordinate system if rotated to a new coordinate system still maintaining their angle amongst each other which is 90 degree how the old coordinate will change and see how to go ahead consider that there is a point x1 x2 x3 the k point which has actual coordinate 2 5 minus 7 that means x1 equal to 2 x2 equal to 5 x3 equal to minus 7 and here x y z are the coordinate axis so in terms of our previous notation this is our x1 axis y is our y1 axis i am sorry x2 axis and this z axis is basically our x3 axis now assume that this has undergone a rotation in this way the z axis has remained as it is so x3 axis and the x3 dash axis remain coincident there is no rotation z or z dash remains the same but x axis has undergone a theta amount of rotation correspondingly the y axis has also undergone theta amount of rotation so initially the angle between the x x1 and the x2 axis was 90 degree and after the rotation of theta and theta what will happen the x1 dash and the x2 dash axis angle also remains the same 90 degree so the orthogonal relationship among the axes are maintained now the question is for such a rotation and for such a coordinate what is the new coordinate after rotation is complete so of course we have to find out now the lij values once the lij values are known then we will be able to find out the x1 dash x2 dash and the x3 dash uh, coordinates now lij just write recalling the formula is equal to cos of oxi and the angle oxj dash oxi is the before rotation and oxj is the axis after rotation that is why the dash is given so i consider first i equal to j equal to 3 that means a case of this is equal to cos of ox3 angle ox3 dash ox3 is our z axis and as i told you the z axis has not undergone any rotation so the angle before rotation and after rotation between the z axis will be zero cos 0 is 1 so l33 is equal to 1 now i we want to see what is l11 l11 is given by cos of ox1 and ox1 dash ox1 is our x axis and ox1 dash is the x axis after rotation and we have said that that amount of rotation is 23 degree so l11 will be given by cos of 23 degree whatever comes out now a request to the student you tell me what is l22 it is not difficult and we have in this way finished lij values when i equal to j we will now consider the values i not equal to j for example i is equal to 3 and j equal to 1 that means l31 is cos of ox3 angle ox1 dash ox3 is our z axis before rotation and ox1 dash is the x axis after rotation what is the angle here we can watch even after the rotation of x and y axis the x dash axis 
or which is basically our x x1 dash axis is making 90 degree with the z axis so this angle is 90 cos 90 equal to 0 so l31 is equal to 0 now it is your responsibility students find out all the lij values once that is being done you have to put these values in the matrix and then find out the x1 dash x2 dash and the x3 dash 